Let's do this. Let's try to decouple the tests from table view. Yeah. One way we can do it is to create some helper methods. So the tests don't access the table view directly. We can create here an extension, private but extension, uh, table view. Yeah, because again, ideally, you want to test the behavior of the of your production code, right? You don't want to reference the structure of your production code in your tests. This is important to for creating like flexible systems. Right? Otherwise, you're just coupling them. As Kyle said here with a table view, that can constrain you in the future. So number of users is a table view dot number of users. And now we call number of users directly on the SUT. So we don't need to know about sections in the test. We don't need to know about table view. There's one method, number of users. Now, if it's coming from a collection view or from a table yeah. view, it doesn't matter from the test point of view. Exactly. It means later it's much easier to refactor this to a collection view because you just change the helper. Cool. Not every, imagine you have 100 tests, you need to update 100 tests. No, you update one helper method and that's it, right? There's a, an extra, yeah, OK, yeah. exactly. The test has no idea what, what sort of UI you're running there. It doesn't care. Only cares, OK, here are two items in my list. That's it. That's what I care about. Also define here that the user sections is actually the index 0. So more context, because maybe in the future we have more sections in the same table view. But also, the tests don't care about the others. We are building the tests in a composable way that is like you're going to test one thing at a time. When you're testing users, we're testing users. It doesn't matter. If we add more sections, we shouldn't break the user's tests. All right, so we hide all of this behind these tiny abstractions for the test. It makes it even more readable, right? So if yep. you load with two users, we can also create a make user helper. Because for example, the ID is irrelevant, right? Correct. Let's create a make user. Private func make user. User is we return user. Make user. Make user. Because we're just checking the count yeah. so far. We don't care about the properties. Boom. Nice. Extract helpers. Now we can test what is the value, let's say the name at row zero, let's say it should be uh, user zero. And the email, the row zero should be email zero. And at one, one should be user one, email one. Now we can define here the name here is user zero, and the email is email zero. So we define the data we want and then expectations that should be met. With that data, you're already passing a, the make user. Oh, yeah. And we can pass name and email. And the ID doesn't matter. Yep. And we can create some other helpers here. So, name, add row, row will return an optional string. So now we need to get the cell from the table view, and we can use the data source. So table view, data source, and the cell is the table view. Oh, sorry, data source dot cell for row at index path, index path. So the index path is index path for row, row at index users section. Now we return the cell. What is it? Username? Oh, we need to cast it to user yeah. cell. We return cell, username. 
What is it called? Say label, maybe? Like some sort of name label? Name. Cell name label. The same for the email, but it's email label. Okay, the test is passing. But if we change the production code, it should fail. All right. And it does. Fantastic. You can also create a helper method. Cell. Or user cell. Mm -hmm. Role. Just say user cell. Role. Role. name yeah you can return the previous one that's it mm -hmm. return yeah boom so we have test now for the cell okay render name and email 